So at the end of the day, what exactly does a developer do? What is your job? Is it writing code simply? Developers actually are problem solvers and they are architects. They are essentially looking at a set of tasks that need to be done and they're figuring out the optimal way of doing this. Now, sometimes, well, a lot of times, this involves lots of coding, writing code, but it also involves deciding what frameworks to use, if any, what languages to use, and how to specifically put that code into play so that it makes sense. I'm trying to avoid jargon terms so that I can speak to as a broader audience as possible. That's why I say when you are learning to code, learning to be a developer, the code is the foundation of it all, but there's much more involved in it. That's why in my mentoring program, which is my bootcamp, but it's very different from anything else out there, one of the key aspects of it is having students actually build real things, working with a third party. Now, following along a tutorial, it's kind of like painting by numbers, right? It's not really painting. Uh, same thing if you are just following a code tutorial where you're building a Twitter clone with Node.js or something where you just fall step by step. That is like doing pad work as a boxer and thinking that's turning you into a fighter. It helps, but the fact of the matter is it doesn't train you when you're just doing tutorials. That doesn't train you to actually think like a developer and to develop those problem solving skills that all developers have to develop. So in practical terms, developers are breaking down problems and figuring out how to use coding, use technologies, like I said, as I said, frameworks and libraries, etc., to get the job done. Now, there is no single way to do anything. There are many different approaches that you can take to put up a website, put up an e-commerce shop, build an, uh, a mobile application. For example, let's say a client comes to you and they need to build a mobile app that uh, manages what's going on in their uh, inventory in their warehouses so they can have employees go in to a warehouse, uh, open up their phones, open up the app that you're going to develop, and then say, okay, I'm taking this item here or I'm taking this item there. And so in real time, the whole company is going to know what items have been sold or have been taken out of warehouses by employees. There's many different ways you can do this. You can do this natively. So if you wanted to uh, do it for iOS natively, you could do it with Swift or Objective-C. Uh, you could do it through uh, PWA Technologies, which is a web-based solution. You could do it with Flutter, React Native. Now, as a developer, you're going to have to sit there and make a decision. Okay, for this particular project, which technology stack, native iOS, PWA, Flutter, React Native, which is going to be the best approach given the particular needs of this particular project and what the company wants. Budget factors into it, uh, what the app needs to do factors into it in a huge way. Why? Because certain applications demand that you write native, native code in Swift or Objective-C in the case of iOS. In the case of Android for mobile development, it would be, of course, Java and Kotlin. These days, Google prefers Kotlin, so probably want to do it in Kotlin. Anyhow, Sometimes applications like games, for example, a lot of games will require that you leverage the entire power of the device. So a PWA might, might not be suitable for that. Flutter may not be suitable for that. On the other hand, you may have a text-only situation like in this warehouse scenario that I mapped out for you in this example, where cross-platform solutions like a Flutter, like a React Native, like just a PWA, even just a responsive website will be a better solution for a whole bunch of reasons. So as you become more experienced as a developer, you're going to be able to figure out quickly, well, more quickly as you become more advanced, you're going to be, you're going to be able to figure out 
which approach is the best given the circumstances at hand. It's very often that you will, as a developer, learn something new on the fly, especially the first three to four years, based on the needs of the project. That's why one of those fears that are out there, the fear of, oh, am I going to learn the right technology? Whenever people on YouTube or wherever else will tell you, no, no, this technology is terrible and that technology is the way you got to go, right away I can tell you that's a sure sign of somebody who's a noob or somebody who hasn't really worked in industry much because that's kind of a silly question. So going back to what I was originally talking about in this video, as a developer, you have to develop that ability to analyze projects like the one I just suggested and figure out what technologies you need to learn to be able to effectively execute on this. As you become more experienced, your ability to do this efficiently and quickly will increase. So as a result, what you're worth in terms of you know, pay is also going to increase with experience. That's why you don't want to get caught up in the whole tutorial hell thing where you're worried, oh, should I learn this, should I learn that? No, you learn your basics, your key fundamentals, and then just so you can get your foot in the door because most of the learning as a developer is going to be on the job, especially the first three to four years. You know, some people say three to five. I say three to four. Anyhow, that's where you're going to do most of your learning. The great thing about that is you're going to be paid to learn. So the first year is the entry-level job, that first job, hardest one to get. You take whatever you can as long as you're writing code, right? As long as you're doing what you want to do. This is... Has to, this has to be considered. Your first job has to be considered as it, the final leg, the final stage of your learning process. But the great thing about this is you're being paid to learn. So with all this kept in mind, in my mentoring program, we get people up to speed as quickly as possible with the key fundamentals so they can get their foot in the door. It turns out an entry-level job. And then from there, they're going to see their skills go and their pay go up quite a bit. So there you have it. A developer is a coder, but coding is only one part of the skill set that you have to develop. It's a many layered skill set to be a successful developer. Once you get past that initial hurdle though of uh, learning the fundamentals of coding, when you understand how to think like a true developer, then it becomes much easier. It becomes like a strategy game. I used to, back in the heyday, when I was coding, uh, writing code in the 90s, when I first started running apps, uh, it was so exciting for me to build an app that people were actually using. My, one of my early SaaS products that I had developed, SaaS as software as a service, was a dating site. And uh, I'd be like, Friday night, Saturday night, writing code, adding features, debugging, because I had people using it. There's something special when you write a piece of code when you build an app and people are actually making use of it, that's, uh, you get a kick out of it, I have to tell you. It's not just financial gain. There's, a, there's also a lot of satisfaction uh, in that uh, when you provide utility for people. All right, I hope you found this video useful. If you want to learn more about my mentoring program, link is below. Uncle Steph, that's me. Bye-bye.